welcome back. Today we're talking about we were talking to Deb Deicher. She is uh, the owner of Double D Media, and she was just as I'm just going to recap this is that Deb uh, it comes from a traditional family. She marries. She gets a great job, the job of her dreams, I think you yes. could say, right? And then after a couple of decades into it, the position is no longer available for her and she must make a choice and she makes the choice now to to and to see it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to say I have learned all of this information right from this position how can I use that and take it to the next level and right. in order to do that you needed to go back to, for a f more formal education yes. so halfway through your life really and more than halfway through your life so at the age of 45 44 45 you decide to go back to school to be that adult learner that non-traditional right. student as we call them in right. the academia all right so you get this you go back for that and you now graduate you get the certificate i was one of the first five people to graduate from this pilot program at albright college at that time, yes, at that time it took four months. Today you can go for web courses that are degrees. At that time it was so new, it was only certificates. And you went through a whole range of discipline from graphics to web marketing. And uh, some you spent longer on than others. But the one thing was you had to work on it. It's like they taught us code, which when they said HTML code, it's like, okay, it might as well be Greek. What is that? Uh, you hand coded. You did what was then called front page. So all this is totally new to you. Everything is totally new. Totally new. Okay, so it's totally new. And then and when you graduate that, did you get a job then? Actually, I was very fortunate. Uh, a man by the name of Peter Abraham had his own web hosting company. He's the, he's the person who helped Albright design this program. Uh -huh. A lot of people do programming and design, which they lump together. Programmers are going to be programmers. Designers are going to be designers. And he helped them design this course just for web design. And then he, he gave you a job? Is that it? And he was always part of the teaching process. And at the end of it, he approached me and he asked if I would like to join his company. Oh, that must have been a little ego boost. Huh? I was very excited. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so you stay with him for a few years? For a few years. And my dream was always that I wanted to do full service, meaning print as well as web design. Okay, so in order to do that full service like you do now, right. where you are now, obviously, you need to take a big risk, right? So I kept learning behind the scenes. Okay. It, it's like I took a few extra courses, but I also had friends in the printing industry and picked their brain as much as I could. Because a lot of it is working with your with sure. your art packages and getting to understand you know how everything goes together. So all while I was working, I was going home at night and playing around with different art pieces and seeing if I could go the next level. Okay, so you so I'm. Uh, so you do. I mean, I, I'll just jump ahead a little here. You do take that risk, and you go. I do. And you do open your own business. Right. And things are going along really well. Yes. And then? And then my father's health takes somewhat of a turn for the worse. Okay. He had a slight heart attack, but now he's at the point he can't be on his own. He needs to live with us. He's 84. Uh, this is in 2004, so I've been on my own a few years. And... There was never any question that he wasn't going to be with us. Because why? Because I had a very loving parents who were very good to me. And no matter what I was doing, family's going to come first. So he moves in with us. You move, okay, we, you, and, you and Terry, you and your husband. Yes. Right? So I think also as the only child is that, it's, it's, it, like you say, it's basically a no-brainer. Exactly. He's coming, he's coming and I'm, and. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have been through I have two siblings, uh, brothers, 
therefore I'm an only child. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when my mom got sick, she moved in with me as well. So I do. I, yeah. I can definitely can appreciate that. But yeah. So okay. So da- so your dad moves in with you, and he's ill, and you have to now nurture him and try right. to nurture this new business that you have right. as well. Right. Right. And at this point, every day is different. Mm -hmm. When they're in their 80s and they have certain health problems, you know that too. Mm -hmm. It's like one day you may get a lot done, one day you may get a little done. One day you may get nothing nothing done. done. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And that's where you really, anybody who's having their own business, I think you have to have that determination. Even if you're dead tired, and that's where it helps if you enjoy what you do. Yeah. Because you still have obligations to your clients. Yeah, that's true. And I think also, you know, with when it comes to w- being a woman in that kind of situation, is that we're always, you know, juggling those multiple priorities. We are. You know, and I don't know about you, but I got to a certain point in my life where I thought the where I thought I was going to have less priorities, you know? And right. I, and I, you know, that I, there was, you know, when you're youthful, there's all this stuff going on around right. you. But then as I got older, I realized that it's not that it's, there's less priorities, there's just different. Different, they exactly. Just shift, you know, and, exactly. and taking care of a sick parent, uh, it was never on my radar, really. And, you know, right. and so, and I run a business, I ran a business doing it as well. Yeah. Um, so now you got, you are to the point now where then dad was sick for how long? He was sick for just about three years. Three years. That's, that's a long time. Three years. And I'm unfortunate. I have a very supportive husband. Yes. And when he was home, he would do a lot with my father. And that's one thing that can't be underestimated either. You can't do this if you don't have good family support. True. I, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, the, the, because each, every little ounce of respite that you can get, you need, exactly. to, you need to suck it in, boy. Exactly. Yeah, so having that support system is very, very important. Okay, right. so then, and then uh, dad is, passes away? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what happened then after dad passed away? How did you, what happened to you? Well, my work is really cathartic for me. And that's why it was so important for me to stay in an industry that was creative. And I had people that knew my situation that would give me projects. You know, they knew that sometimes, you know, the family situation was going to take precedence, but they all wanted to work with me. So they said, well, you take a little time, which I took maybe about a week. (laughs) Wow. To recharge. That is a little time. (laughs) And uh, jumped right into it. And I'm very fortunate. It's like with everyone I've worked with, not only are they clients, they're also friends. And just like here today, I'm fortunate to be sitting here with a friend who I respect and who I admire. And that's also what helps, because now you're working with people who not only want you to work and produce something, but they also are supportive of you. And I think that is the most fortunate position anyone who owns a business can be in. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a, uh, but you always have to, you know, you get what you give. I mean, you know, that's exactly. it's, it's the payback, so to exactly. speak. Exactly. You know? And that's, uh, so you, you put it all out there. I mean, you did it for your folks, and, you know, and then you took mm-hmm. this, this, this leap of this risk, but with which you th- saw it as just a natural progression. I did, and that's to me, you know, admirable. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, I think that uh, you know, you do what you have to do. We all do what exactly. we have to do. You know, exactly. And the one outgrowth was, I would have been traveling if I was in the golf industry. My father would have had someone looking after him in the day. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, have to be there somewhere for a week if I would have had to follow that industry. Uh, sometimes you don't know why things happen, but I am a firm believer that things do happen for a reason. And when I could have him with me, that was the ultimate. It's like, okay, now I saw why this happened a few years ago. Now I'm prepared. Right. Yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, you set that life course, you right. know, and that's what learning is all about. So um, you started this by saying that you were a lifelong learner. Right. And, you know, and, and as I was thinking to you, of what you were saying was that you not you not only learned uh, from your parents, you then went into academia to learn there, and then you just learned from life experience. Exactly. You know, and that makes you 
a lifelong learner. And that was what makes you brilliant. And that's what makes you a woman with a really fascinating story. Oh, thank you, Anna Rose. So I want to thank you, Deb, for showing up to, <laughs> to chat with me today on The Storied Woman. And the next time, um, we will have another story about another storied woman. Until then, goodbye.